Opa, welcome to Papers Please, a channel where we look at your passports. Today we have a Greek passport from the early 2000s. I don't know exactly which year, for reasons I'll get into later in this video. Starting from the cover, the design is pretty minimalistic. European Union, Hellenic Republic, passport, simple, elegant. The coat of arms is equally minimalistic. A white cross on a blue shield, surrounded by two laurel branches. The design has been in use since 1975, and it hasn't aged a day. The inside front cover is spectacular. It depicts Pericles, the famous ancient Greek statesman, giving a speech to the people of Greece on how the economy has gone down the drains, and they have to introduce austerity measures in order to get bailed out by the European Union. And the people. They are not amused. All jokes aside, though, this print is actually based on an 1852 oil painting by Philip Fultz called a Pericles' Funeral Oration, which was a speech to honor the Athenian soldiers who had died during the war. I know, right? Way less interesting than the Greek economic crisis. That being said, I do like the painting. It's beautiful and adds character to the passport. On the cross page, you find the Ionic Order. This is a type of decoration on columns of Greek buildings. These columns are distinguishably Greek, and they have been holding up Greece's economy for thousands of years. You notice that this passport starts from page three. This is because the bio page was torn off. Bit of a shame, but there's nothing I can do. The biggest drawback, though, is that we have no idea about in which year this passport was issued. I only know that this generation was issued in the early 2000s. If you can help me pin down a more precise year, please leave a comment below. On page three, there are laser watermarks of the national emblem and、uh, page indicators that appear under UV light. Elsewhere, the national emblem is printed across the pages. On page six, you'll find the figurines from the Cyclades, dating back three to five thousand years. Look at those triangle boob. I mean, milk bags. I don't want to get myself demonetized on YouTube. They're really cool, eh? Look at this. Academy Awards. What's he blowing? Double blow. Thick. Wait, what's that? Her eyes are up there, but she doesn't even have a face. What do you mean you're calling the HR department? By the way, the, the Cyclades is also where they found Venus of Milo's. No reason, just want to mention it. Page eight and nine, Knossos, where the Minotaur comes from. On the right side, that's the Snake Goddess. It's a series of figurines found in Knossos in 1903, and is thought of as the inspiration for the character Medusa. I mean, look at those snakes. They are huge. Page ten and eleven, the Phaistos disc. To be honest, coming off the Snake Lady, I can't stand something as flat as this. Next, page twelve and thirteen. Okay, now we're talking Amazon girls playing with fire. All for it. On the right, that's Athena, of course. Next page, you have the Trireum, the same type of ships the Athenians used to defeat the Persians during the Battle of Sausages. I mean, Salamis, Battle of Salamis. Page sixteen and seventeen is the Incredible Parthenon. We have a Canadian tourist entry stamp issued in Toronto, and that's the only stamp on this entire passport. I do want to point out one security feature here, which is that all the images you see on these pages are consists of micro text. If we zoom in on it, we can see the images are made out of the name of the country in Greek. That's cool. There are also micro texts in other parts of the passport as well. You just have to look harder. Before we go on, just want to remind you that if you like this video and you want to see more passports, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Next page, Epidaurus, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Next page, Delphi, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Next page, Virgin. Vir, vir, can I even say that on YouTube? Anyway, this thing is a town in Greece where they found the tomb of Philip II, Alexander the Great's father. In other words, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Speaking of Alexander the Great, did you know that Alexander the Great is on every page inside his passport? What you don't see it? Yeah, I'm serious. Just hold it against the light, and you'll see it. There he is, Alexander of Macedonia. On that note, we have to talk about the Alexander situation between Greece and North Macedonia, Greece's neighbor to the north. You see, Alexander was born in 365 BCE in Pella, the capital of ancient Macedon, which now sits within modern Greece. 
The debate about whether Alexander the Great was Greek or Macedonian stems from the fact that the geographical borders of the two countries have changed dramatically since Alexander's time. It has become this never-ending tug of war between the two countries to claim Alexander the Great as one of their own. Plus, the then Macedonian Prime Minister Nikola Gruevski had a personal obsession over Alexander the Great. In 2007, Gruevski purposefully renamed the Skopje Airport to Alexander the Great Airport. In 2011, Gruevski ordered the world's largest Alexander the Great statue to be put smack dab in the central square of the nation's capital. The Greeks were not happy about these moves because they already had an Alexander the Great airport in Kavala, and they already had their own Alexander the Great statues in multiple cities. When Greece voices their objection, Gruevski says, "Well, I'm not the one who put a giant vagina on their passport." Greece was like, "It's pronounced Virginia." Uh, no, they actually didn't say that. But needless to say, the Macedonian-Greek relations were kind of bumpy during those years. When the new Macedonian Prime Minister Zoran Zaev took over in 2017, he was like, "Dude, what were you doing antagonizing Greece?" He then went on to change back the name of the airport and gave up Macedonia's claim on Alexander the Great in an effort to mend the bilateral relations. Nowadays, the Greek passport is probably the only passport in the world that has full legitimacy to feature Alexander the Great. If you think this is crazy, don't even get me started on the name of Macedonia. But I'll save your ears for the Macedonian episode. Getting back to the passport itself, page 24 and 25 feature the Antikythera machine. Nobody cares. Page 26 to 29 are religious institutions. Not an expert on the Orthodox Church, so I refrain from making jokes about that. Page 30 and 31 got the Bridge of Arta and the Rio Anterio Bridge, one ancient, one modern, bridging Greece into the future. A fantastic way to conclude this passport, in my opinion. Page 32 is the notice section. Interestingly, it makes mention of the military duty. This is because Greece is one of the very few countries in the world that has active conscription. All male Greek citizens aged between 19 and 45 are required to serve in the military. But if you're living outside of Greece, you can apply to have your conscription postponed indefinitely. However, if you're unfortunate enough to get drafted, then you get to put on this beautiful dress and do this elaborate dance in front of the presidential palace. Alright, guys, that's it for this Greek passport. Losing the bio page is certainly a bummer, but in the end, it did not take away too much from the experience. We can still get a glimpse of the Greek culture, heritage, and history from the rest of these pages. I, for one, now know a little bit more about Greece than I did before, and I hope the same for you.